Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too so you don't miss out on a video. Last time we were here, we started the airport. We uh, started the airport by building a big, large park low interchange and planned out how the road network kind of flowed into the airport itself, laid out where the airport uh, runways are going to be, and uh, you know, big planning episode, and I think it was definitely worth it. In today's episode, we are going to actually start really building the airport, um, getting the concourses in, getting maybe some transit in, uh, getting the airplanes going. That's going to be the main focus of today's episode. The next episode is going to be trying to really round out the airport area. Um, we might get going on that today. We'll see where it takes us. Lots in the air today. Let's hop out and take a look at the city. So here we are. This is uh, the park low interchange that we built last episode. It flows down into here, where we have a major traffic problem in this area because we didn't address it last episode. So we'll address it at the start of today's episode, and then we'll move into the airport itself. Um, so here is the airport. We got our runways planned out. I did find the, the issue. They were hidden, but I found another issue. I couldn't find where the concourses were. Um, so I found them. We're just gonna be using Find It today to, um, to build everything uh, but a few minor changes uh, with the road layout through here so we come into the airport this way we split go to terminal one go to terminal two and then you can come out all the way over here because we'll have some parking options available through here we'll have some hotels and stuff through here but a quick exit out this way um, works as well so the slopes aren't too bad through here and obviously we swing all the way back to our park low interchange but we flow down the airport parkway and we get to this area here. We got a bit of a traffic issue. And this is screaming to me to be a roundabout, but if we swing all the way out over into here, we have a bit of an issue with lanes and uh, we'll be addressing that as well. We have an abandoned gas station. So I think it's time that the city destroys this abandoned gas station, maybe replaces it with a new one. And we upgrade lanes here. Um, yeah, this one won't be a roundabout. We don't have the space with the rail. But this one will be a roundabout. And we'll also upgrade this road down into here. Which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, it's basically just backlog from uh, up here. So we'll just do this really quickly in a bit of a speed through um, to start off. All right, so traffic is flowing a lot smoother now. There's gonna be a lot of backlog um, for the next little while, but traffic will definitely flow. Um, I didn't show you, but a lot of the traffic coming from this way is turning right. Um, so having this roundabout um, in this situation works out really well because of the quick turn off through here. And a lot of the traffic here is going straight and right. So um, it works out perfectly. And then here it's kind of all over. But uh, yeah, we got a new gas station in, a bit more modern. This one has a, a rabbit on it. That's pretty great. <laughs> um, so hopefully that one actually stays. Uh, and we're just gonna have a bit of a backlog here. I want to keep this uh, light because I think that's very realistic. So we'll let the, uh, the game sort itself out for a little while and we'll come back uh, later on and see if uh, our little roundabout improvement worked. But down here, um, yeah, just extra lanes. Hopefully that should do the trick. Uh, for the time being. Of 
course, there are always larger and grander things we could do. But we'll follow Airport Parkway all the way back to here, where we're at Michael J. Fox International Airport. And here is the runway system we have. It's a 100 degree angle. Um, and this is kind of mimicking the Edmonton Airport. But I'm not rebuilding Edmonton's airport. I am just kind of taking inspiration from it. So I think the first thing we need to do is go in to find it, apparently, and uh, write an airport. And we should get our um, all the items from the airport DLC in here. And look at this. Here are the runways. And basically what I'm going to do is we are going to draw in the runways. We're going to talk about some fun facts. And then we'll start planning out the taxiways and the concourse. Uh, so if I have the runway continue on this direction, I'm going to need to get this one to stop before it and vice versa. So this one seems to be the longer runway, but maybe this one should actually truly be the longer runway. We have the most space out in the wilderness. This is uh, west, this is east, so I think that would make sense rather than a north-south runway in this case. You know what, I think we can get them comfortably to each be 160 units. Um, I think that would be good. I believe that this is a good runway setup here uh, for the two. Now, in real life, you can use a runway in both directions, uh, but in, the, in this game, you can only really use them from one. So uh, no matter how we did this, uh, this would always kind of end up in the same manner. So I think this uh, will work out for our game. So now let's delete this road that we have in here. This was just a placeholder here, so we had our angles correct. You know what? I, I'm more comfortable if we have them facing this direction uh, just for the taxiways. Uh, so we'll, we'll leave it like this for now. So here are the concourses now. So we're using the modern airport concourse. And um, the reason why we're using the modern airports is because it is the most like our metros that we have going on. And uh, that's because we could tie a metro station kind of into this uh, build and it would uh, work out nicely. It would kind of all look one and the same, right? So here we are now. We have our concourse at the same height as our um, road here, which would be really nice. And we have our secondary service road uh, through here, which awkwardly kind of just ends into the building. But um, yeah, so we need to make sure we have a separation here because this would be just for, uh, you know, trucks moving back and forth, shuttling goods between terminals. So when we come back and detail this up, we'll have to make sure that we uh, detail uh, like a fence in between here. And you know what, why don't we try and do that right now just so I don't forget because I don't want to forget that detail. So we'll use the zoo fence and we'll go into the parallel uh, road or parallel tool mode. And I'll just go from here to here and we'll click tab so we get it onto the other side. And then we just need to click plus and minus and this should um, increase. And what I want to do is I want to get it into the pillars here. So I'll click enter and then exit. And I'll use find it to just select this or picker mod, sorry. And then uh, we'll just kind of wing it into here. Close enough. The angle is off. That is fine. But uh, this would be definitely a security gate. <laughs> and for security purposes, I think they would definitely need to make sure that um, people just can't walk right into the airport services area. Uh, that would be really interesting. But there is a garbage truck in here, so I'm sure that at some point there is a gap that will be monitored by security for trucks. And maybe we can make that gap uh, right here. So let's kind of redo this fence right in there and then we'll just get a small little uh, I don't even think we need it to be a road because it might get a little tricky with um, some uh, nodes and whatnot but if we just 
make some concrete right in here. All right, so this is the secure entrance where the garbage trucks can come in and out. So I'm sure that they would have some guards stationed here. So we might lose this asset or this prop if we place it down now, but since we're talking about it, we'll place it down. So I think we can just kind of mimic a guard uh, building with um, one of these guys. That works out wonderfully. And hey, speak of the devil, there's a garbage truck. All right, so we have our main connection between the two. I think uh, when we get a certain upgrade here, we'll be able to, um, I think it is this. Yeah, we'll be able to kind of place this right in here and then we'll have like another terminal kind of jutting out. So I think a lot of this is gonna be kind of touch and go. We'll build it and then we'll have to delete it um, as we get, as we move along. But uh, let's take a look at Michael J. International Airport. So we need to build an aircraft stand. We have a runway, we have the terminal. Let's build an aircraft stand. Uh, I think maybe we should bring this terminal or this concourse out a little bit farther. We'll work on terminal one for the time being. And we can bring terminal one out to about here for now. Why don't we mark terminal one and terminal two with a park, um, yeah, one of these, but I can't actually. Okay, we could go with districts. All right, so there we go. Now we have labels over them, which is nice. And then let's also continue the uh, concourse out to about here. That works. Yep, and then we have a nice viewing deck of the mountains. Which would be really, really nice, wouldn't it? And a road that goes around it for some reason. So, um, now let's talk about building that aircraft stand. Since we need to build an aircraft stand to upgrade. Uh, we also have a bus depot, which I recall from Brockton County was rather glitched. So I'm going to do something different. Uh, we might place it in and turn it off or something like that. But look at this. Here is a small aircraft stand. So, we get into... We get into the terminal, we go through security, which is probably all within this one kind of pretty small area. We probably have all the uh, all the um, airlines lined up kind of right in the back here. And then there's probably an escalator down in this central point where you have to go through security. And then right along this mirror here is probably where you go in this direction for your gates and then this direction for your other gates. And there's probably some sort of separation here between terminal one and terminal two. Um, let's not talk about the inside of the airport too, too much, um, <laughs> cause that could get a little interesting, uh, but, uh, maybe what we need is a couple little jut outs of this concourse. So we could go from here and come out maybe 20 units so we can remember that. Yeah. The one thing here is that it doesn't have the cleanest of connections. But that could also demarcate where kind of some checkpoints are or something like that as well. Um, maybe the security ends right here and then there's like gates one through five and then uh, six through 29 <laughs> or something. Uh, so I think this could work out. Um, let's see. I think there's gonna be lots of deleting in this, uh, this build. So let's not get too, too attached with, uh, with, uh, with much here. So let's see, we have gate, uh, gate one right here. And then we have gate two right at the end. That makes sense. And maybe we don't have anything off of this middle part here. Let's get water throughout this whole airport. I am not going to follow the motto of, uh, water needs to be under the roads. I am just going to maximize our space in here. Okay, just for the airport guys, just because I don't want to have to keep rebuilding and building again. Um, so uh, we got those airport stands in. Now let's get our um, taxiways. Fantastic, here is the taxiway entrance. 
So this is where a plane would load into uh, to get onto the runway here. So let's have this connection right there, 10 units. And then we can run this one beside, maybe not 10 units, maybe we go something like six. All right, now we have a good little system going on here. So taxiway running in the opposite direction of the runway. Um, airplane here, for example, which we have one loading in right now, uh, can then, let's go back to that view, please. That'd be awesome. Can then line up through here and then go out. And then if they're coming in, they can do so this way and come into their areas. Um, so yeah, I think this is gonna work out uh, pretty nicely. Let's uh, leave this for now and let's see what's going on here. So we just gotta really wait for people to use it, which is something that is gonna be um, of, of note um, because it means that we're gonna have to um, wait as this airport levels up, which is why I wanted to get it going uh, sooner rather than later now, now that we're kind of nearing episode 100 of this series. So um, hotel discounts adds a bonus of 200 points to the airport's attractiveness rating. Um, yes, 100% we need that. Uh, great maintenance adds a land value bonus to the whole airport. Uh, well, we don't necessarily need the land value bonus right now. And car rentals, tourists are much more likely to use cars, which may increase traffic. Okay, so let's just leave that for now. And we don't have the airline unlocked yet. So there we go. Already we have the attractiveness score. Now we just need to make sure that we get passengers out here, which will just come with time, really. Um, so all we're going to do is focus out of Terminal 1 for now because I just really don't want to build and rebuild too, too much with this airport. But there are many, many other things that we've unlocked. Um, one such thing that we've unlocked uh, is uh, the hotels and stuff. And then also we have the modern control tower, which um, adds attractiveness apparently. So I know what I want to do with this already. I want to get this control tower somewhere over here. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just going to plop it down in this area. Just because I want to build up this zone um, with some fun things that we don't have unlocked yet. Uh, so if we go right into here, we can kind of see what we have going on. The modern concourse hub we get at level 2. That's what we need in this zone. But... There is the small aircraft stand. We already have that. There is the small aircraft hangar. Now the hangars don't have to be in the same area. There's usually some maintenance type style area and we could run that down in here. Oh, look at the traffic backup. Looks like it's just node problems. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we'll leave it. Uh, okay, so uh, to, in order to kind of properly build a hangar area, uh, let's first of all try to line it up with something in some sort of manner. So let's use a road. And these are small ones, I believe. I think that we can get some larger ones. So let's just place two of these. We could even get them a bit close together, seeing as... It's a pretty similar asset, seeing as it is literally the same thing, but uh, we've got to make sure that the items don't, uh, you know, break or anything like that. So, or the, the props inside of it. So I think that's a, that's a good distance between the two. And then we have, oh, we need to spin them around. All right, so we have a bunch of these luggage bags through here now i like to think of these private hangars as um you know not only just areas where they do maintenance on the planes but also areas where you drive in uh say you have a private jet the uh the local hockey team the fort prairie prairie dogs i think it was, is what it was maybe they have their their jet over here um and you know they charter it so maybe they they come in through a security gate or something and then they can get in at the hangar and then they can get out through here. So let's uh, hook up a bunch of these uh, taxiways.
We have our first takeoff. That is wonderful. Look at that. Hopefully that was 500 people and we can start working on level two. Uh, nope, the plane took off empty, apparently. <laughs> Very funny. So let's uh, continue building. I was just uh, adding in some more of these runways here so we can kind of fill in this area. So maybe terminal one is domestic. Domestic planes tend to be smaller planes since they're be smaller or less distance to travel. So maybe terminal two is the international zone, uh, which would mean that the, you know the giant Boeing's and stuff are over there. And, um, and yeah, I think that would make sense. Let's take a quick ponder through here and see. So a plane comes in through here, it wants to get to here. It uh, would need to flip like this. So all of these would need to be going facing down. Yeah, and so the plane would come into here, plane would come into here, here. But uh, if they wanted to come into this gate, they, need, they would need to come in via this one. Any plane wanting to leave would have to go all the way to the end. So maybe what we do is we do a bit of rotation here like this so if this plane wants to get out it can get onto the main taxiway in this direction here um yeah i think this could work out all right so we can do something like this i don't want to get the hangers too too close to the runway so we can leave it like that but let's uh, get some more decorations through here. It looks like planes are, are operating too, which is really good. And this one has zero people on it, uh, but that's okay. We don't even really have transport out this way yet. So maybe that's something that we should think about doing sooner rather than later. So we've got the small hangar in, we have the budget airport hotel. We also have these small parked planes. Now I am far from the first YouTuber to suggest this, but these fit underneath the hangars perfectly. Now they don't snap in like I did, uh, like I had them there. They snapped in for me because uh, we have the air, uh, the, the road right here and they snap to roads. So if you wanna make them look realistic, you can have them in different uh, directions um, or sorry, different uh, distances within the hangar itself. So uh, we can also switch up the plane type. Now I'm sure we will just concrete the entire thing, but they're um, are some other things we can work on and uh, some of those things like we said are transport but let's also double check uh, that we got all of the items kind of in place yeah the bus hub so yeah you know I don't enjoy too too much how the transit networks have to connect to the system of the airport right because if we had a bus hub here for example how would people get to security so that's why I think maybe we can have like a secondary concourse area. That would be, that'd be interesting. Maybe we can have like some type of connection here. This is, we're just playing around right now. Okay. We'll just place this down. And then if we hop back into here, we could have the, have the, uh, the bus kind of hooked into here. Um, and then we can have a bunch of stuff run out of like a secondary area. Now, I don't mind that at all because I think that could be cool. Um, you know, architecturally at least as well, that would be uh, neat of them to do. So that's something that we can definitely think of. So maybe what we need to do is think about how transit is going to operate in the area. Now, I do know that I really want to get a monorail through here. Oh, wow. Megalopolis, look at that. I thought we already achieved this. Um, but hey, we got a cargo airport hub as well. So uh, I know I wanna get a monorail in here. And the reason why is because I think uh, having a monorail operate through a uh, airport is really cool. So if we were to get a monorail stop right here, we'll use move it slide it back into and in, are into place properly we have crosswalks right here which makes sense we could plop this down right here it is technically working still maybe give it a bit of room here all right there's no back door interesting then we have another one on terminal two
And then maybe what we could do is we could end it here or we could even swing it up and around or something to the zoo, which I think is over here, uh, which could be neat. Uh, but I think the main purpose of this is going to be shuttling people around the airport. Sorry, autosave. It always kind of glitches out a little bit when I have an autosave. 25 people. Nice. Uh, so if we have a monorail from here to here, and then we go over into this zone where we have like um, an expo center, a convention center, hotels, long-term parking, which is something that I really enjoy. Uh, building in my cities as you know if you've seen Brockton County uh, but also I was thinking about how metro can connect into here now if we were to get a metro station we would definitely have something over here especially if we have expo centers and hotels and long-term parking um, we have our Winslow metro marked right here for the town of the small town of Winslow so we'd swing the metro out from the station up into here Here's another station. And then, what do we do from that? Do we leave it right here as the final destination? And then what we do is we have the monorail come out to meet it. And then you hop on the monorail to go to your destination in the airport. Maybe there's a shuttle as well that makes many more stops. That could be cool. But if we have that concourse right through the middle here um, with that bus terminal, maybe Maybe we do that out over here with the bus terminal. And then that would make sense for um, kind of incorporating the monorail and stuff like that out there. If we have the bus out this way as well. Um, and then in which case we could have the monorail kind of be the only way in and out of the airport itself. Is that the best idea though? That's what I'm thinking. Because that, that I don't know. Because I would think that it would make sense to have the metro come all the way in. Maybe we we'll place it right in the middle here, as the final terminal, as the final terminus, and have like a bunch of parks stuff in between here. So instead of having a terminal one and terminal two stop for the metro, we have just one. I think that could work. And then the monorail would be supplementary. Maybe we even run the monorail into another area. But I think it would be really cool to have a monorail because I really enjoy it. But I don't know if it would make the most sense for this city. And that's what I'm kind of debating between. Um, and I would think that the city would not spend this much money on a monorail. This is not a large airport. There's only two terminals. If we split the difference between the two and we have a metro station right in here there's probably especially if it's underground it's probably a uh, underground section that connects to each terminal so we talked ourselves out of it doesn't make logical sense for this city to have a monorail system but we talked ourselves in to a singular metro station so let's think about what that singular metro station would look like and I think this one is the one that makes the most sense because it's awesome. <laughs> it's uh, it's really cool looking. It's rather large. Uh, I think we can position it really cool kind of in this zone. Um, and basically because it's probably the largest of the bunch that would make sense um, we are gonna we are pretty elevated right now so the metro is gonna go underneath the highway probably have a uh, ground station here ground level station here and then we'll come right into the airport where we go underground again so let's um, draw it in and we're not going to connect necessarily a road to this side but I am going to use this as a guideline for myself Maybe something like this will work. I think the ar architecturally, this looks really nice, kind of centered in the middle here. And I think um, that uh, would be really cool to do. So let's get a metro operating into this area because I think that would be important to help us level up. 
Um, now, normally I would definitely rather that we go station by station to this point, but um, we're just we're just gonna have to know that we are definitely going to be changing the directionality of this station because I think what's gonna happen here is we're gonna swing out. Well, have the station point in any direction because we could have the station go and kind of line up with this. Could have it line up with this curve. So, however, it does. Uh, meet our curve out over here it'll work so let's now just kind of connect up through here underground of course and then we'll come above ground where we will have a nice simple connection in and we're not going to worry about what this what the metro looks like or anything right now um we're not we haven't even built winslow yet but let's get an airport metro out this way. So I believe we actually have a metro station, our metro stop that comes out here, uh, the Hanover Airport line. So this goes all the way from Hanover Heights to our airport. So let's uh, let's move this one into the airport. Okay, and then the General Hawkins line uh, should also go there. So let's uh, refresh our memories of what they those lines are um, so the General Hawkins line is this yellow line which goes uh, north through mid uh, through the stampede ground up into Ortonville and then all the way to Dunn I believe or does it end somewhere it ends at the stampede ground apparently uh, but the Dunn Fort Prairie line goes all the way from Dunn to uh, the downtown and ends there so I think we could have an airport express that runs from Dunn all the way through these stations and stops at only the key stations here and um, I think we might need to do a whole metro revision with uh, once we get all these new metro stations in here but I kind of just want to extend the general, general Hawkins line to be honest with you instead of do a whole new one um, because a bunch of things converge at prairie uh, at stampede grounds like that red line as well so uh, let's just extend this one out to the airport as well all right so we're gonna have trains coming out there now um, and we're probably gonna need to up the passengers on them uh, so yeah we should probably already raise this one to eight and then if we go to the General Hawkins line, let's see, this one has 10 on it. Yeah, we need to definitely up this one to 12 or something because there's some spots that are woefully under prepared. So um, yeah, I think this is gonna work for now, for now, for now. We're gonna definitely revise this once we get these two new Metro stops in here because we can get express ones in that would that skip Winslow and Expo. Uh, let's mark this one in. Okay, so we'll have uh, metros that bypass Winslow and Expo, uh, and then just go right from um, Central Walsenburg Terminal One, or you know, Airport Station, uh, and then we can kind of um, uh, have another express that goes from. Uh, I don't know. A park station, University, Walsenburg, airport, you know, stuff like that. So I think all in all, it works out great. We can also technically extend this metro out to a future town, uh, but I would rather not. I think this town over here and other supporting towns are going to be run off of a separate transit system and uh, the connection into the airport is going to be probably via bus or something because um, or tram or something like that but we'll figure that out that's way way down the line okay so now that we have uh, metros coming out this way let's make sure that we have at least a uh, a temporary again temporary temporary pedestrian connection now we're gonna start seeing some people here this plane for example 
has nine people on it. We're getting there. We have 159 passengers through this zone. This is fantastic. We are definitely moving along steadily, slowly, but surely. Okay. So, uh, let's talk about some of uh, the other options that we have available to us. Um, every time we increase the airport's attractiveness level, we also increase the airport's, um, our people's willingness to join us at the airport. So there's just a few more things that we can add, add in for level one, and then I'll let the game sim till we get to level two for Friday's episode. Oh wait, this is Friday's episode. For Monday's episode, <laughs> where we will uh, have a cool opportunity to do so. Oh my God, the airport's on fire. The airport is on fire, everyone. We don't have services out this way. Let's make sure we get services out this way. Quick, quick, quick. This is pretty funny. And look at this, people are actually walking to the metro station, which is fantastic. But you know what's not fantastic? An airport that's on fire. This is not good. And people are just, you know, not caring. Oh, there we go. Thank goodness. I don't think this is the same helicopter we just placed down. <laughs> um, yeah, not good, not good. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the other items we have. So the bus stop, we already talked about it. We're gonna try to do a whole concourse thing out here in the Expo station with the bus, uh, with this, but there's also the elevated airport metro station, which um, you know I was thinking about doing as well, but it's the same idea. It connects to, maybe maybe this one we can, we can connect to this concourse section we have through here. That could be cool actually. And then the airport train station, we're not gonna do this. Uh, the train station um, doesn't make sense for us. Uh, in this zone, maybe we could get it, and maybe, maybe we could have like some diesel train run from here to Baker City through the zoo into Barbersville. But uh, I, I don't think trains are gonna be a thing in this series for the uh, uh, the airport. My goodness, I can't believe this is still on fire. It's very much dist it's distracting me a lot. <laughs> uh, cargo airports we don't get till uh, level three, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, miscellaneous, okay. But we got the hotel. That's what we need. The budget hotel, and what better budget location than right in the kind of centralized area of the downtown uh, of the uh, the airport, uh, kind of in this zone here. Hey, there we go. Level two, luxury airport hotel, which is probably going to go out in the expo area. Uh, classic large terminal, bunch of stuff, aviation fuel station and whatnot. Very cool. So uh, we'll do some of this today. And uh, one thing that we definitely need in this zone is parking for the airport hotel. So um, I would probably think that this one here, we probably jump the, jump the gun with these paths and we should probably have gotten a road out here because the airport parking probably would be out this way, right? Okay, so I just went and selected a uh, underground parking lot that I have uh, available because I think this would be really neat if we could get an underground parking lot for the hotel. Um, so we're gonna need to rework something here if we're gonna get this in. Um, we can almost get it in right here. I don't really want to rework this road too too much um, so maybe we can get that right in here. Uh, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense because of the um, Metro. So if we put it on this side. We can definitely rework the approach angle of uh, this road here. So let's plop this down. Okay. 
Okay, this looks uh, pretty nice with this budget hotel right here with the underground parking beside it. I think that makes a lot of sense to do uh, for this parking here. Now, we haven't talked about parking lots for the uh, guests coming to the airport itself. Uh, temporary parking, short-term parking, the expensive parking. Um, and uh, we can look at that uh, probably next episode. Um, oh my gosh, now there's police that are needed over here. All right. So we need to bump up the attractiveness. We need to get a ton more people out this way. Uh, let's just temporarily throw down another police station. I know this is like not really how I normally build, but I just want to make sure that uh, we're A-OK -okay for now because there's other things I want to touch on that are kind of more structurally based uh, on the airport before we start getting into the semantics of uh, the detailing and whatnot, like the luxury airport hotel, I think I mentioned. I'm going to place this one over in here. The large airport hangar, this is another one that we can plop out over here, right? Okay, so this is, again, the domestic uh, terminal. So I don't want there to be too, too many hangars here. Um, I think this will probably be enough. get this one and then we'll get another one of the medium park planes and then we'll pull one of these ones out a little bit nice you could even prop them up kind of in like as if they're getting ready to go and now this is actually a good idea to do because we can see that we place these too close there we go now the wings can clear everything right so uh, very good to see. This is more of our decorating area. So that makes sense to do. All right. Now, uh, looking at this, this is all the park planes. We also have the aviation fuel station. Now, it's amazing how that rhymes, but uh, we definitely need this to link up somewhere over here. This is where uh, the trucks would come in as well to fuel up. Uh, and then bring said fuel directly to the planes at their gates. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So we can place two of these right beside each other. Perhaps they're different types of jet fuel. And then we are going to have something very similar on the other side for the international airport area with mainly just larger hangar base and stuff. Um, now we're not going to concrete everything in. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, but let's see if there's anything else we need to do because I want to jump onto something else um, that's really, really cool that I don't, I haven't, personally, I haven't seen um, uh, someone else kind of do, but I hope to be wrong. And please let me know if you have seen someone else do this or if you've done this yourself, because I would be really curious to see how common this information is and this knowledge is. But let's get uh, one of these, these viewing bays. These ones are really cool. They definitely add a ton of value. Let's see what it says. It adds trick, uh, 60 attractiveness. And then let's see if we can squeeze in one right in here. That would be really good. Nice. Okay, we don't need too, too many more along here. But I wouldn't mind if we could get one at the end but i don't know how feasible this is going to be seeing as these planes need to actually get by here right so maybe what we can do is plop one down right here and then use our fancy dancy move it Sure, that'd be a nice view if you're interested in aviation and stuff like that you know checking and seeing how they're stocking up the planes and whatnot all right so how are we doing we're getting there on the attractiveness um i'm sure that it'll go up um as we kind of add more things in do these planes add attractiveness they do okay well let's cheese it a little bit then okay 
Okay, so we added just a few props over here. Now we need one more plane and we have it, or we can add in another one of those concourse things. That would work too. We could add in another, oh, medium aircraft stand, but I don't want medium aircraft. Uh, oh, maybe we could. How big are they? All right, so uh, we have some medium aircraft stands over here, uh, which means we need to remove this. Now, I don't love how there's grass on this, so let's see if we can remove it with the BOB mod. All right, very good. Now those don't appear, um, and that is fantastic because now we can recenter this a little bit um, so it's not so awkward. Now, I actually don't mind if this is actually attached like that. That makes sense to do. So let's leave that one. Let's see how this looks now that we don't have the grass everywhere. Yeah, we need to get this one a lot closer to this side uh, now because we have a larger plane coming in through here. Okay. So now I do recognize that in order to get here, people need to get onto the ground floor. Now that is okay with me, especially with these smaller planes. I don't know how realistic that is, but these medium planes definitely are probably more what I think happens. So maybe these ones are, you know, less used over on this side. Uh, or maybe these are the charter jets. I don't know. What is taking this plane so long? Is this one glitched a little bit? Looks like it is. Maybe we can just remove this plane. There we go. Now all the planes are doing their thing now. Let's see if this plane can make its turn or something. Well, watch these medium aircraft here. We might need to do a bit of rethinking about how the medium aircraft uh, work in this area. Maybe they can only be on this side, for example. But we'll come back to it. Another time, let's see if we got to that attractiveness level. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay. Because uh, we needed to get another one of uh, these guys in, didn't we? And now that we have um, this kind of set up like this without the, uh, the grass and stuff, I feel a lot more comfortable just placing them down. Oh, okay, there we go. It just took a little bit to catch up. So, you know, we're really getting there. Uh, and this is only Terminal 1 and only half of Terminal 1. So I think we're doing good. Now, um, I think we're probably going to leave the building until we get to the next level, level 3, where we can then uh, look at, uh, you know, doing the expo area. Oh, but well, you know what? We actually got this, though, as well. Let's see if we can attach the modern concourse area through here. Okay, awesome. That looks uh, really cool. Now, I actually forgot this had a metro stop in it. Uh, a little weird, again, that, uh, you know, people don't come into the airport this way, so how do they go through security? Um, but, uh, you know, I think for game mechanics reasons, we could say that, or, you know, for, you know, just us talking through this and having fun and using our imaginations, uh, we could say that these two metro stations are at the same level and they don't intersect with the airport itself. So, this means we could bring in a metro station into Barbersville at some point, uh, directly to the airport or something like that. Maybe we could say it's a tram or something like that. We'll figure it out down the line. And I'm sure that really boosted our attractiveness of the airport as well. And I really like how we got our uh, tower kind of right out in the middle of the airport. This is what I really wanted uh, with this. So. What did I mention before that I haven't personally seen a uh, City Skylines YouTuber talk about with an airport build? Um, you know when you're flying sim, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator or something like that, or you're looking at Google Maps, or you're taking a plane, and you're like, what are those numbers at the start of 
a runway. They're often right in here, painted on both sides. And they're facing the direction if you were approaching the runway, you can read it on both sides. Well, that is actually um, the compass coordinate for the direction that it is facing. So let's say we have our compass situated north, which is directly like this. I believe we have a compass over here. Yeah, so this is north. So we'll keep our camera situated like this. If north is zero or 360 degrees, we go in this direction towards the east of the compass. When we get to the uh, first angle here, uh, directly east, that is 90 degrees and then 180, 270, then back to 300 slash, uh, 360 slash zero. So if a runway is running like this, we can kind of estimate the degree of what the approach angle is. Now, since we're looking at the compass in this direction, just imagine a circle right in our screen here. Then we have, um, you know, this runway is facing this way, which is, you know, roughly, I don't know, like 30 degrees, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, that makes sense, right? But no, so what happens is the number here is actually the angle of approach for the airplane's compass coming into the runway itself. So this would be 330 degrees for the uh, plane approaching this runway, facing it, the plane's compass looking in this direction. There's a really good video by CGP Gray, who's a fantastic YouTuber, who explains all this. And Canada has a really complicated system itself because uh, it's centered on the North Pole, because that's how compasses are. But Canada wants to use a true North system, and the rest of the world uses a compass North system. So the North Pole isn't actually directly on the top of the planet. It's slightly off. So Canada wants to use the exact top of the planet because we have tons of airports in the, in the North. So having to change the number uh, direction on our airports all the time is really confusing, apparently, because you know, the magnetic north pole changes so often. So I think we said this was 3.30. So what happens now that we have that number in our head is um, we're going to paint it in, but we're going to use bushes because we don't have another option. But uh, we're not going to write 330. What you do is you just take off the zero, take off the last number, round it to 10. So we're going to do 33. All right, so this is runway 33. So when you're approaching, it goes breaker, breaker, approach 33, airport, you know, southwest 33. And then the plane, uh, you know, knows which one way to take because this would be painted on. So since we know that is 33, and I believe we said that this was about 30 degrees, that's the kind of what we're using. So I think what we'll do is we'll have this one labeled 03 since it would be zero three zero degrees so we'll have zero three fantastic okay so let's recenter ourselves okay so i just paused it and took an actual look at a uh, a compass just to make sure that i had the degrees right and this is wrong so i'm just going to delete this Okay, so let's redraw them in. This one is, hey, level three, holy cow. We blew through those levels and now we have everything unlocked. So, you know, now that we have all this set up, we can definitely look at uh, getting the next steps in next time, next, uh, next episode. Uh, but let's finish this because this is really fun. So this is 210, so it would be 21. And you know what, I should probably do it in a proper two and not the way I do my twos um, and then this one is going to be 300 so this one is three zero okay, I'm gonna clean these up uh, off-camera 
and then this one is 120 degrees so this one is 12. all right so there we have it we have our proper numerations of the runways which is a ton of fun um now for looking at this i'll get them a bit closer and a bit tighter uh, off camera when i have some time um and make them look tip top perfect maybe we'll do it in the final uh detailing time lapse but you know i don't love how they're zero three and thirty that, that would get confusing but i do know that the air traffic controllers when they're radioing to the plane to come in they don't say use runway 12 like they all are they would say using runway one two facing east or east runway one two or something like that i'm not an air traffic controller but it makes sense that uh, they have the same numbers because this one's 21 this one's 12 this one's 30 this one's three like my goodness maybe this is why edmonton's airport is on a 100 degree angle <laughs> so they can have something similar like this but uh, i think this is a fun little build folks and i think we're going to end it today with this uh, with our runway numbers prominently displayed in the corner but this is a good start for our airport and uh, you know we did a traffic fix over here let's take a quick peek at that traffic seeing how it's doing look at that the roundabout cleared it over time that is fantastic there is still a bit of a backlog over here and the gas station has remained it is thriving <laughs> that's good uh but uh yeah folks look at this this is a ton of fun would the airport look better from this angle now we did the last thumbnail from that angle let's do this one let me know what you think did i totally mess up the runway things i'm gonna double check uh off camera and uh figure out to make sure that i actually did the runway numbers correctly but i think this is a ton of fun we have our the beginning of our domestic terminal going on over here we have our first uh hotel we have our metro station have a good one folks talk to you soon peace out